Welcome to Pimpy's Investment Chat, where we keep investment talk simple. And here's your host, Pimpy. What is going on out there, peeps? All right. Great, great chat today, earlier today. Um, you know, it was talking to people, you know, going about the, oh, you're negative and stuff. And somebody said, no, I get it now. I just didn't like what you have to say. I'm like, look, nothing that I'm talking about is set in stone. Seriously, these are just possibilities. Could it happen one way or another? We don't know. But I'm saying that you should at least be aware of these things. So I'm happy that people are starting to get it now. But I do want to come back and respond to your comments under a video that I did about possibilities. Before we get started, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. If you're not a subscriber, please do so. Because when you do, it helps out the channel. And I certainly do appreciate it. If you're thinking about buying gold and silver, head on over to our friends at Miles Franklin. The link will be down below in the description. When you make your purchase, make sure you use promo code PIMPY, P-I-M-P-Y, and they'll take care of you. If you have any additional questions, you can reach us over here at this phone number or over here at this particular email. For all orders over $10,000, reach out by email and we'll make sure that you get a great deal. So come on over to Miles Franklin and add to your precious metal inventory. Talking about this video right here. You guys left some comments in there. Let's get back to it, shall we? It says, why not? We all just wait and see what the rate is going to be. Just wait and see. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. You know what I mean? We don't know. We'll see what Iraq is going to do sooner or later. Pippi, when I first started listening to you four plus years ago, you encouraged me to invest in physical precious metals. I did so with your encouragement, and I am so better off and so grateful to you. I am Pimpy Rich, guy. <laughs> I love that Pimpy Rich that you guys remember that. Pimpy Rich is a state of mind. Rich is faith. Rich is hope for my future. Rich is accurate knowledge. Rich is expectation for wealth and abundance. Thank you. I'm calling you out, Pimpy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jeffrey, um, you know, wow, I really appreciate those kind words. I really do. You have no idea. When people say things like you just did, how much it touches my heart. Seriously. And I'm grateful that I was able to catch you at a time that you were open-minded to what I had to say. And uh, you took that jump and now you're much better off because of it. So thank you for letting me know that. I appreciate when people do. Same for me. Pimpy was the reason I started stacking. Thank you, Cindy. I know people are like, you need to do more gold and silver videos. I know you guys. I know. The thing is, I get so caught up in trying to explain to people, you know, make sure that they are being kept down to earth when it comes to the Iraqi dinar. I've been studying the Iraqi dinar so hard, so hard. It's exhausting. It takes up a lot of my time. But I need to put the same energy into going back to precious metals because that's something that's now, that's something that's realistic. And that's something I'm hoping that a lot of my listeners take advantage of and at least jump on that bandwagon. Really, Jeffrey and Cindy, I really do appreciate the kind words. Lopping the zero is off the exchange rate, not the bills. Oh, good Lord. Lee, go through all my videos. Because <laughs> I explained to you in detail what lopping of the zeros are. Okay, what a lopping, reducing, removing, deleting. It's all a re-denomination, man. <laughs> it comes off the bank notes. But I appreciate you chiming in. I didn't put more in than I could afford to throw away at that time. James, that's how people look. If you guys are going to invest and you don't know a whole lot about investing, then you should be careful. I would not invest in anything more than I can afford. That's why you'll hear me say to people, use discretionary funds. Discretionary funds are money that you can invest. And if you lost it all tomorrow, sure, you'd go, wow, man, that really sucked. But you'll still be able to manage. You'll still be able to eat, pay your mortgage, pay your car payments, take care of your kids. It isn't going to affect you in such a way that it cripples you financially. So use discretionary funds, all right? The concerning part with this is some people say they are hearing from God and they tell people they will be rich based on what they are hearing. And if it doesn't happen, this will affect your faith. Usually faith is not based on storing up worldly wealth. Uh, Mark, this is one of the reasons why you'll see me go full bore attack on some people, especially when they try to bring God into these things. I say this all the time. My issue with it is this, you know, like Melanie, oh, talking to God. She's not talking to God, dude. 
Trust me, she is not at all. Okay, she knows she's not, but she's just going to mislead people. She don't give a shit about you guys. She only cares about herself. God is not telling her anything whatsoever. For the most part, most of the people out there, God's not telling them anything about the Iraqi dinar. It's just bullshit, okay? It really is. They know talking about religion and bringing up God catches the ears of people who really believe it. And so they put all of their faith in the person that's telling them that they're talking to God, which is just bullshit. Okay, you guys, don't fall for that. And I agree. If this doesn't work, then it's damaging towards faith. It's damaging towards people's relationship with God, not so much the content creator who lies to you guys. Okay, so just be very careful. I told you to stop listening to videos only that tickle your ears of people just telling you what you want to hear. That's the wrong way to approach this. Good point, Mark. I wish this would be over with. Whichever way it goes, I think a lot of us feel that way. <laughs> Jason says, Pimpy, appreciate your videos. I made a choice to own gold and silver, and glad I do. Everyone, in my opinion, should have some physical. Absolutely. Look, I, I said this before, and I'll say it again. Even if gold and silver drop down to $1 an ounce, sure, people would be like, well, that really sucks. But you have to understand that having physical gold and silver isn't just about the money part of it. It's about having freedom. Freedom from being in a system whose goal is to enslave every man, woman, and child. And that's the honest God truth. Having a physical gold and silver keeps you from being in that system. So stop eyeballing where gold and silver is right now as far as value is concerned. Just know you need to have it in your possession. All right, you guys? And like I said, if you guys decide to buy gold and silver, you know, go check out our friends over there at Miles Franklin. The link will be down below in my description. Go on over there, town Pimpy sent you, okay? Investing into physical gold and silver is a great, great investment for you and your family. Pimpy, I think you should drive home the point that you would also benefit tremendously if the dinar exchange is high. Obviously, you hope it skyrockets as well, but simply providing possible outcomes, good or bad. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, Flora, let's be honest. People act like, oh, Pippi doesn't want this to work. He wants it to fail. Are you kidding me? You know what? I, I hope to God I wake up tomorrow and they decide not to re-denominate. But they went ahead and changed the exchange rate. And it's 15 to 1. I'll take it. $15 for every one dinar. And we are allowed to keep the currency that we have with no re-denomination. Who wouldn't want that? But I'm about being realistic. I don't want to mislead people. Are these things possible? That's why this whole video is about possibilities. Is it possible they reinstate the 322 rate without re-denomination? Of course it's possible. Is it possible we wake up tomorrow and they re-denominated and it's still the same exchange rate? Yeah, that's possible. I'm just saying, stay grounded. Don't get your hopes up so high that if it doesn't go the way you want it to, they become really depressed. You know what I mean? Or some people are even being suicidal. Don't do that. It's not worth it, okay? Don't let these people mislead you to the point where you're being fooled that you've already spent the money in your head before you actually got it. That's the concern that I have. Let's be realistic. Over half of the Iraqi citizens keep their dinar at home because they don't trust the banks. That's realistic. I've said that a million times. Can you imagine the Iraqi citizen carrying all of their money to the bank and getting new set of currencies a thousand times less than they walked in the door with? I keep telling you guys, this is where the misconception is. It has the same value. It has the same purchasing power. The only thing that's changed is the appearance of the banknote. Just because they removed the three zeros off of 25,000 dinar, and now it becomes a 25 dinar, the purchasing power does not change. You understand me? Then they would go to the store and try to buy a loaf of bread. Did we already do this? I already went down this example. So if you have a 25,000 dinar times the current exchange rate, $19, 19 US dollars, okay? When they re-denominate, when it goes from 25,000 to 25, see how the purchasing power is the same. So 25,000 dinar with the three zeros on it is $19. When you remove, when you remove those three zeros and your 25,000 becomes 25, it's still $19. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The bank notes change, not the purchasing power. It's the same. This is where people like this person here 
is misunderstanding. They actually believe that they're going to have only one thousandth of their purchasing power. That's not accurate. I've said this a million times. Not accurate, all right? The guy does nothing than making videos about the comments on his videos. Nobody does that anymore. By the way, pimp, who's? 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 What I do? Spell it wrong somewhere? What do you mean nobody does that no more? That's them. That's not me. I'm a different person altogether. He likes intelligent, supported questions. It's all good. Thank you. Dear Pimpy, please tell up about the smaller notes as 500s, 250s, and 50s. Will they be a throwaway note? Just what is the good and bad of them? So if they do a re-denomination, okay, obviously there won't be a need for a 500 or 250 note. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say they're going to create the notes like the ones that we have. You will see a dollar, a $5, a $10, a $20. A $50 and a hundred denomination. Okay, that's what I think they're going to do. That's just my opinion. But when they re-denominate, even if they keep those lower denominations, the only thing that's going to happen is they don't remove the zeros off of them because there's not enough zeros. What will happen is they'll just get a new look is all it is. But yeah, there won't be no need for a 500, 250. A 50, yeah, but not a 250 or 500. With the 10,000, 5,000, and 1,000 notes, do the same lose three zeros? So and now is a 10, 5, 1. Okay, so yes, that's what it becomes. This will become a 10, a 5, and a 1. You're absolutely right. Now, having said that, they don't lose the purchasing power. The 10 has the same purchasing power as a 10,000. The 5 has the same purchasing power as a 5,000. The 1 has the same purchasing power as a 1,000. I just showed you guys how that's possible. So this person up there is trying to make a point but they don't understand how the re-denomination works. That's why they are confused. Exactly, yes. Hell no, it's the exchange rate. I don't know where they get taking zeros off of the bills. Uh, every study out there that talks about the deletion of the zeros tells you it comes off the banknote. What do you mean you don't know where it comes from? I've literally done a ton of videos showing you guys. That's the difference between me and these other content creators, okay? So I showed you guys at least 20 videos of what a re-denomination is. And in case you don't know what a re-denomination is, that's the deleting of the zeros, the reducing of the zeros, the removing of the zeros, the lopping of the zeros. I showed you my evidence. How come you guys aren't demanding that the other content creators show you that lopping off the zero only affects the exchange rate? And what I'm talking about is see right here, this is how it keeps its same purchasing power. I just showed you guys that, I'll show it again. If you have a 25,000 in our note times the current exchange rate, that's worth 19 US dollars. If they delete the zeros and your 25,000 dinar becomes a 25 dinar, they're gonna take the zeros off here as well. Then this becomes times 0.76. See, still the same value. You have a smaller denominated note, but your purchasing power stays the same. Do you see how that works? But I appreciate you chiming in. Maybe BSV instead of Bitcoin. Mm, not sure. Thank you, Pippi. You're very welcome. What's your take on XRP Lion Guy? He seems full of hot air to me. So many are so full of it. And they spin an impressive tail. Yeah, I've already told people what I think of this XRP lion guy. He's full of crap. I mean, come on. This is another guy that said he talks to God and God gave him this vision of a number. But he wasn't sure if it was a time of day, if it was a date, what it meant. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. So God is going to give you something, but he's not going to explain to you what its purpose is. Uh, no, it doesn't sound right. No. If God gives you a number, he's going to tell you exactly what it's for. That's when, As soon as I heard that, I was like, this guy's full of crap. He's the one telling everybody that XRP is going to be worth a half million dollars. But meanwhile, when cryptocurrencies are running, XRP hardly ever moves at all. I keep telling you guys that the XRP is part of this new world order, world economic forms, the centralized digital currency. You don't want anything to do with them. They help design it. They help create it. As a matter of fact, you can go to Ripple's website, who are the creators of XRP, and you can see that they're already selling the central bank digital currency. The same with XLM. 
That's why I, you know, hey, look, if they go up to a million dollars, congratulations on you guys. You're rich. But what good is it if they give you the money, then turn around and take it from you? Remember, the CBDC is going to have an expiration date on there. So even if these people gave you $10 million out of the kindness of their heart and you're jumping around going, yeah, I got $10 million. But then all of a sudden they tell you, well, you got 60 days to spend it all. You're like, well, so what? I would have $10 million. Maybe I could spend it on whatever. Okay, spend it. But then after the 60 days, what do you think happens? You're back to square one with all the rest of us. <laughs> the money's gone. It expires. So you are paying your bills how? With the millions you have? Nope, sorry, it's gone. It expired. That's the trick in all this. This is how they're going to sucker you people in. That's why you don't want to support these companies or these cryptos that are involved in the designing of the central bank digital currency. Maybe if BTC can go to a million... And DWAC can merge to DJT and go to 250. When T wins, the IQD can drop zeros like Kuwait did. Yeah, okay, so Kuwait didn't drop no zeros. You hear all these stories out there and they keep confusing uh, Kuwait with Iraq. The difference between Kuwait and Iraq was Kuwait, sure, they lowered the value of the Kuwait dinar when they were invaded because Iraq had stole their money and was stealing the wealth from Kuwait. But it was, what, just a little over six months after Iraq was removed out of Kuwait. So nothing happened to the Kuwaiti dinar. All they did was re-denominate. They created new currency, new-looking currency, and just reinstated their old rate. That's what happened. Unlike Iraq, sure, their currency was lowered as well, but... They were given inflated dollars. They added three zeros onto their currency because Saddam Hussein had printed a boatload of money. Not only was their currency punished, but in addition to that, they were given inflated dollars because of hyperinflation. So it's a, it's a combination of things for Iraq that's different than Kuwait. That's why you hear them all the time, oh, they'll reinstate the rate. Okay, okay. It's going to be, remember they're telling us it's going to be the old ways. Okay, okay. But if you guys remember when the exchange rate was 322, did you see any 25,000 dinars, any 10,000 dinars? Did you see any 5,000 or even 1,000 dinars? Or did you see this? Isn't this what you saw? Lower denominations? Isn't that what these are? You don't see 10,000, 25,000. So when the rate was 322, their currency banknotes were of lower denomination. They weren't higher denomination, and that's the thing that these content creators keep avoiding explaining to you. They're not going to do it with these hyperinflated dollars. They're going to re-denominate, drop the zeros, and then you'll start seeing the exchange rate change. Is it possible it goes the other way? Yeah, I've said that before. It's possible, but that doesn't make any sense to me anyways. No hyperinflation. Inflation rate in Iraq decreased to 0.0.14% in January from 3.97% in December of 2023. Inflation rate in Iraq averaged 8.37% from 2005 until 2024, reaching an all-time high at 76.55% in August of 2006 and a record low of negative 6.37% in October 2009, what are you talking about? What do you mean, what am I talking about? <laughs> the fact that they had an inflation rate of 76.55 in August of 2006, that means your lower denominations would have no value. So what do they do? They add three zeros onto the currency. But now it's lower now. It's between 2 and 4% where it should be. It's maintained that over a period of time. That's why now they're talking about deleting the zeros off the currency. They don't need it anymore. They need to delete the zeros off because their currencies are hyperinflated. They don't need to have those zeros on there any longer. They need to remove them. That's what all the talk is about. Some of us still want to know how this affects our stocks on ISX. You may have explained before and it was something I missed. Please make a video on that for us. Okay, I will. I explained it before, but I'll do one specifically for the ISX. Once again, Pimpy, I will totally disagree with one of your points. You stated that there is a possibility that they would keep the three zero notes and change the rate to one one. That is not a possibility, period. 
I don't even believe one cent is possible. <laughs> so just wise, just so you know, I was just generally speaking. I'm not saying it's going to happen one-on-one. I'm saying to people, look, nobody knows what's going to happen. Is it possible? Sure, it's possible. But what is the reality of it? You know, that we wake up and they don't read, denominate, and they keep it one-to-one. I was just trying to make a point to people that we don't know what's going to happen. Do I think they're going to keep the three zeros and go one-to-one? No, I don't. Not at all. But is it possible? Of, of course, anything is possible. We don't know what's in the crazy minds of the Iraqi government. You know what I mean? That's the point I was trying to make. I don't even believe one cent is possible, let alone one dollar. understand you're implying that one never knows, but I'm telling you, I do. Folks may not want to state the obvious, but there is no way in hell that the NAR will increase much further than it is without a lop. If so, why is the parallel market in the IQD toggling between 14 and 1500 with the official at 1310? If the dinar was going to be much higher than a 1310, When the exchange in Iraq be trading, it may be at 1200 or 1100 While the parallel market, we're talking about the black market, and it just depends on how desperate the people are that want to trade their dinars for the U.S. dollars. You know what I mean? Some people are willing to give up more of the Iraqi dinar, even if it is worth more than what they're trading, but they want the U.S. dollar so bad that they're willing to give up more of the Iraqi dinar to get that U.S. dollar. We got people like Iran that's under sanctions, all right? That's a perfect example. And they have a boatload of Iraqi dinar because of something that happened a couple of years ago. The thing is, did they want the dinar? No, they thought they were going to be slick. They thought, I'm going to get all this Iraqi dinar, We're going to send it over to Iraq and they're going to put it through the currency window. And then I'm going to get the U.S. dollars and I'm going to circumvent the sanctions. But it didn't happen that way. They got screwed and now Iraq is suffering from a liquidity issue because they don't have enough Iraqi dinar because it went all over to Iran. But I was just trying to make a point. I appreciate you, though, chiming in. I like what you're saying. Unlike your haters, I'm glad I started watching your channel. And ever since then, I have stopped listening to the other channels that have kept me on a string with zero results. I may not hear what I like, but it's better than being lied to every day. For those others that say it's only your opinion, well, so far, you haven't been totally wrong yet. Keep up the great work, and I do appreciate your work, and it's good grounded information. I now know that unless I buy a currency like a madman, Becoming an instant millionaire is never going to happen. I'm now just happy to get anything out of this investment. God bless you always. I appreciate those kind words. So here's what I tell people. Look, if they re-denominate, all right, well, fine. Then we have to trade in our dinars and we get the new bills with the zeros missing. But if you're out there and you're saying to people, look, the Iraqi dinar is going to be the richest currency in the world, the richest currency in the world. If you believe that, then just hold on to it. Let's say that even if it goes to a $3 exchange rate, so my $5 million dollars now becomes $5,000. Fine, okay. And then they turn around and then I, I can exchange it for three to one. That gives me $15,000. Yeah, I'm not a rich millionaire jumping around snorting coke off hookers' asses. Fine, I get that. But I invested. <laughs> well, for me, I don't know what you guys paid. But you know, I got my $5 million. I think I spent less than, was it $3,000 for it? If I get $15,000, then I still made a profit. Okay, even after taxes and everything, I still would have made a profit. So I'm not upset with that. Sure, who didn't want the millions? But I still made a profit off my investment, and I'd be pretty happy with that. That's for sure. And there's one on here that goes for 245 minutes of absolute and complete horse crap. <laughs> LOL. I left a comment the other day saying absolutely nothing you said was informative Exiting or the truth. Existing or the truth. We are now dumber for, in fact, listening to it. <laughs> and I was blocked from leaving comments. I was dying. That's funny. I like that comment. I know which one you're talking about. Is it this one here? What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. <laughs> that is easily one of the funniest comments in, in any movie because it allows people to use it whenever to imply to stupid things that people say. But it is a great uh, scene from a movie, yeah. 
Manuel says, possibility versus probability. Huge difference. Yes, it is. And the truth of the matter is, we're dealing more with probabilities than we are possibilities, unfortunately. Keep on telling the truth. Thank you. I will. And I appreciate you guys chiming in. Pimpy, I've been following this saga for nearly three years, and I know you have to give an alternative analysis of info coming out of Iraq, but I am especially thankful that you do not dismiss out of hand the possibility of a revaluation. God bless. No, I mean, look, again, we're, we're dealing with, you know, probabilities, but the truth is we don't know. I mean, there's people out there going, well, you know, this might still happen. Anything might happen. We don't know. But I have to sit here and say to myself, look, if I'm a betting man, I got to look at the odds. What are the odds of it happening this way versus that way? But yeah, I'm not going to dismiss that the other doesn't happen. But I'm looking at myself saying, what are the odds that actually happen? Well, it's not very good, but it's still a possibility. Okay. So now I'm going to buy something with a chance of bettering my life. Lotto tickets. Uh, go with gold and silver. I promise you, you can't go wrong there. Cryptos are backed by the dollar, so if the stock market crashes, so would cryptos, correct? So here's my thing, crypto, I think is interesting since, what, 2019? Cryptos, unfortunately, following the market trends of the stock market. So when the stock market crashed, so did cryptos. And that's not what you want in a safe haven. A reason why you would see um, gold, silver, cryptocurrency start to go down in value is that people start losing their ass off in the stock market. Well, what we see happen is they'll start selling off some of their assets like stocks, cryptos, gold and silver just to make ends meet. Then they saturate the market and then you'll see these things go down in value. But the one that rebounds the quickest always is going to be gold and silver. So it might take a slight dip, but then it rebounds real quick because people know to protect themselves, they better be in gold and silver. I said this before and I'll say it again. If you have a retirement account and it's in IRAs or it's a 401k, these are invested in a different stocks then I hope and pray to God that you take at least 25-30% out and invest it into gold and silver as a safety net. So if the market crashes, well, so does your IRA. So does your 401k. All you got to do is do a little research and saw what happened in 2008. People lost their ass off. People who were retired had to go back to work. But had they had their money invested into gold and silver... It took a little bit of a dip, but then rebounded real quick. So they didn't lose their purchasing power. They didn't lose the money they invested into gold and silver. And they had that to fall back on, which is a lot better than stocks that dropped down big time. Do a little digging into 2008 and do comparison. You'll see what I'm talking about. I wouldn't say no. We saw it happen plenty of times. Here we are, 2-9-2020. Then when the Rona hit, look, the Dow Jones was at 29000 and then it dropped all the way down to 20. That's, you know, almost a third of its value is gone. Sure, it rebounded, just like all the other ones. But the smart thing is, when stock market and cryptos crash like this, so look, here we are right here. So let's just use Dow. This is what, February of 2020. Then it crashed, right? How long did it take for it to rebound to get back up to 29,395? February of 2020, November of 2020. So where are we at? We're right here, right? Just when everybody else did. So February, to gold was $1,644. How long did it take for it to get back to that level? A month. It took a month for it to regain its value. And then it kept on going. So that's what I'm saying is you pay attention to the stock market, let it drop, get rid of your stock, get rid of your crypto, buy into gold and silver, hold on to it. When it plateaus and you start to see stock and cryptos rebounding, then you turn around and you get back into those at a much cheaper rate. See what I'm saying? That's why I did that stock watch. If you guys remember, when I did my stock watch videos, I showed you that even though cryptos were down and so were other stocks, this would be a good time to buy in them. Once they bought them out and they started to rebound, if you guys remember, I said, if we put 10,000 in each of these investments, let's see what happens. And Ethereum, I mean, we put 10,000 in Ethereum, ended up making $290,000 in nine months from when it bought them out and we bought 10,000 worth. If you held on to it, it was pure profit of 298,000 once I sold it. And I sold mine two months too early, but I still made $298,000 on the rebound. So you buy it at the bottom and let it catch up all over again. 
Probably at first, but eventually the money will go to cryptos for some store of wealth and financial mobility and funds. Although physical precious metals is a store of wealth, in my opinion, it is a store of wealth. We saw cryptos crash. We saw that. We saw it lose 70%. I think it was 77 altogether. Bitcoin lost 77% of its value. That is not a store of wealth. That's not a safe haven, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong. I'm grateful that it has rebound, but it took, what, years for it to get back up to where it was from the point of which it crashed. So it was at its highest point, and we're up here about, oh, I don't know. Let's just use this as a point. We're at 65000 Then it crashed all the way down to here. You know, that's a 75% loss in value. 75. Of course, people are going to be scared. You'll panic. You're scared. But how long did it take for it to get back to the 65,000? Here we are at, what's this, 11, 21, when it first went down? It didn't reach the same peak until, what's this, March of 2024. Three years it took for it to get back to its level. Three years. That's a real gamble. And we've seen not only did it take less than, what was it, a month for gold to rebound, but it grew up in value real quick. Anyways, that's it for now. I do appreciate you guys chiming in and I'll get back at you later. I'm out.